Hey ladies, what's up? Welcome to another episode of my Revitalized Womanhood podcast to the core episode, my Friday episode. I am Gina Trimmer, the host of the Revitalized Womanhood podcast, obviously, and the creator of the Revitalized Womanhood movement and the private coaching community, the Revitalized Sisterhood. Welcome. Welcome. It's been a minute. I I don't know that I've ever introduced myself again since starting this podcast. (laughs) So if you're new here, you just kind of go with the flow, right? That's what we do. I had to keep the door cracked because I record my Friday episodes while I have the three-year-old running around. So he's uh, hopefully got himself entertained for a minute with his dinosaurs. We'll see how far we can get into this without any distractions. (laughs) <laughs> fingers crossed, right? No, it's fine. It's mom life. It's it's all the things. That's my vibe, right? When I do things that are more structured and formal, I don't feel like myself. I don't. I when I try too hard, I feel like an imposter. I feel and when I see it, I even you guys, I did two gym classes today if you're watching on the YouTube. So my hair was as it should be in a top knot, like always, my hair is always in a top knot. And so Rick and I are going to, it's a little story. Rick and I are going to go to Hawaii in a couple of weeks, just the two of us for a little couple's getaway. And so I'm like, okay, Mondays and Wednesdays, I've determined, I'm determined, I've decided, I'm determined that I'm going to do two classes a day. So I go to burn boot camp for the first class. It sounds insane. I know it sounds insane, but it's what I have to do because my child care is free at burn. So I do my one class there, which usually Mondays is arms like push pull and two and Wednesdays is legs. So it's like the best days, worst, but best. Right. And then I run zip over to summit and do, uh, the class there, the bar class on Monday and Wednesdays because the daycare there is not free and I only get X amount of time, right? So I have to do both. (laughs) It sounds insane. I know, but it's what works. It's what works right now. And that's all that, it's all that matters. Was there a point to all this? Anyway, yes, the point. (laughs) I'm sorry. The point to all this was when I get dressed up. I mean, I'm in my gym clothes still. I'm in my gym clothes. And up until about 10 minutes ago, I had my hair in a knot and that's how I feel comfortable. That's me. You guys, that is just me. That's not hot mess, mom. That's not hot mess. You know, I'm not trying to wear this label of hot mess as an excuse for not getting ready. It just is more me. I mean, look, I can get ready and I, I just, I don't feel as comfortable. I feel way more comfortable with a top knot. Anyway, the point of this being, the episode today I want to talk about is, are you an imposter in your own life? Deep, right? That's a big, that's a big, whoa, I'm not an imposter. Wait a minute. Let's, let's talk about this though, because I have been a few times in my life. I can identify and actually it was pointed out to me, not, and maybe not even pointed out to me, but like she helped me work through it and it came to me on my own. Yesterday, yesterday, I was told or helped to come to the conclusion of that I have been an imposter in my own life. And this has happened multiple times in my life when I've had these realizations. And it does happen because that's growth, right? That's you, it's growth and it's seasons and it's where people were constantly changing and evolving and hopefully growing and becoming better versions of ourselves, right? But I think the first time this happened to me was was when I got divorced for the first time. I was married right out of not high school, college. We were in college. We were um we'd got done 2 years of college. So my first husband was my high school sweetheart. We we dated through high school and he played baseball for a couple years of college. So other thankfully, right? If he wouldn't have played baseball in college. We probably would have gotten married right out of high school. That was just where we were going. That was the direction we were heading. Luckily, we did each get a couple years of college under our belts before we got married. And so 
this was, I was being groomed and, and I didn't realize it at the time. Now it's like so obvious to me. I was being groomed by his mother, who was a wonderful mother. There's just nothing wrong with her. She was a mo- wonderful mother. And, but she was like grooming me to take care of her bouncing baby boy, right? Like I was being groomed to make sure he ate everything exactly like she'd been raising him, like the five course dinners, the salad, the bread, the roll, the salad, the meat, the potatoes, the dessert. I mean, everything. Like I had to be this this wife, right? I had all of these expectations. There's so much more that goes along with that. But for no fault of his own and no fault of my own, really, we were just both very young, I started realizing, luckily, sooner than later, that I did not like to be the wife that was expected to have a five-course dinner ready. Like, I didn't, I didn't like that. That wasn't for me. Luckily, I'm saying luckily, I had these realizations by myself. And, and because I was young, I think I obviously did not handle it well and just kind of jumped ship and said, I'm out of here. I'm too young for this. I don't want to be married. So, you know hindsight probably could have been handled better. But looking back now, that was an imposter. I was an imposter in my own life. I was trying to live up to expectations and carry out versions, roles of me that were expected of me, put on me that I did not choose for myself. I did choose for myself, but not because I stopped and actually considered what I really wanted for myself, right? Does that make sense? Are you are you ladies like, yeah, yeah, I totally get that. Are you like, you're crazy. This is weird. Just go with it. So then I meet Rick, my husband, and he is adventure. All systems go. Like, one of our first dates, I was just telling someone this the other day, like boring dates, just going to dinner, just going to a movie. That was so not my, like if a guy took me out and it was just like, go to dinner or go to a movie, I was just like so bored with it. I was like, okay, no, we're not going to date anymore. That's just, I, that's not what I'm looking for. And then here comes Rick blows in, <laughs> in this tornado. If any of you don't know what a tornado is, please Google it please. He actually, if you've seen his, if you've seen his new studio, um, you can go look at it over on M42's Instagram, his new podcast studio. There's a picture of me actually on the wall in my wedding dress, leaning up against this car that is so an old tornado. It's like the biggest boat of a car you could even possibly imagine. He cut the top off of it with like a sawzall, like turn this car into a a convertible by himself. (laughs) And then put huge longhorn <laughs> horns on the front of this car. I mean, it was a hoopty. It, and he, the funniest part was he could make it backfire. So he thought that was just the funniest. It was, it really was entertaining. But I mean, can you imagine this guy? So we're probably, we were 24, 24 years old about. So this isn't like, high school kids doing this. This is like pretty much a grown man. I mean, right? But he's got this car and it is so funny and it just totally matches his personality. Honestly, the first time I met him, I don't even think I met him. The first time I saw him at a party, his friends were using him as a bobsled to ride down the stairs. So <laughs> a little insight into Rick. So he was just this personality, just this whatever. And one of our first dates was not going to movie. It was riding um, four wheelers out at the sand sand dunes. And then a couple dates in, we were going to Mexico. We drove down to San Felipe, Mexico, like on a, on a whim. But, you know, so I realized, wow, this is what I've been craving. This is more me. This is what I love. This is, I, I actually took the time between getting a divorce and through dating and to actually sit and think, what does Gina like? What am I looking for in a partner? What am I looking for out of life, right? And and when those when you're asking yourself those questions, they they are pretty obvious when they appear. Uh-oh, the 3-year-old. Shh, everybody be quiet. Shh. Just kidding. He'll come in here. So then the next imposter showed up 
gradually. The next imposter showed up gradually and I didn't realize it because again, I was just so caught up in my own life and living it and one day at a time and just, I don't want to call it a hamster wheel, but kind of it is. You you kind of get lost on this hamster wheel, right? So, and it happens to all of us. If you're not being intentional, it, it happens to all of us. And out of nowhere, we kind of got caught by it was a beautiful life. I'm not saying that. It wasn't bad. It was just, we were living in a way, we were making so much money. We were still, of course, young. We were in our 25, 26, 27s. And we were making so much money because the building industry in St. George was out of control. And we were making a ton of money and having a great time spending it and whatever. And then the recession hits. And here we are, you know, again, 25, 26, 27, whatever we were in 2010 is when it finally hit us and boom, legs knocked out from under us. And so we had an opportunity again to stop and look like at rock bottom. We weren't even rock bottom. I wouldn't call it rock bottom anymore. I'm, I didn't really feel it as much. I think Rick took it a lot harder because for a man, I think you do. You, you're the provider and then this happens out of your control. Something out of your control happens and we were not prepared for it. So anyway, and, and we got the opportunity to re- really look into ourselves and, and decide, is this the life that we want to continue to live? How we were living, we were living like well outside of our means. We were making so much money, but man, were we spending it? And did we have, like, we had the interest only loan on the house. We had financed the, 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 um, big dog chopper and financed the four wheeler and find it, blah, 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 blah. Right. So here we are. And we're like, what, what do we want to do? We never want this to happen again. We never, ever, ever want to feel this out of control again. We never want our fate to be in the hands of, the government or the banks or whatever, right? So we had to sit down and make a decision. What do we want our life to look like? So again, I had to face the imposter, the person that I had been living as. I had to face the imposter and recognize that this was not truly what I wanted. And I had to ask myself, well, what do you truly want? So zip, bam, boom, fast forward, we've traveled the world over 60 countries and we've got three kids and here we are back again (laughs) into a new situation where, like I said, I'll bring you up to yesterday and someone pointed something out to me. Now, when I started Revitalize Womanhood, I didn't really know what I was looking for. I I think Rick maybe noticed it in me before I even did, but I had been looking for community. I had been looking for a purpose and and not that my life wasn't amazing. I mean, I was traveling the world with my family and I had beautiful kids and a loving husband that supported me and I had I had the luxury to stay home. I didn't have to work. Um and I, but I was just still searching for something more, right? I needed something more fulfilling for me personally, Gina, the woman, not, not the mother, not the wife. Those, those areas were being met and fulfilled, but the woman, Gina, the woman had something else needed something more. So I didn't quite know what it was. And, and I think I was trying things out and that's, I know if you've been here long enough, you've heard me talk about, I, I, started with saint, saint makeup, and got kind of into that world and thought, well, maybe this could be my community. This is great. I have this passion for, I want women to feel their best and their most beautiful and, and minimalist and feature their, their, their highlight, their beautiful features with this makeup instead of gobbing on crap and hiding their beautiful features. So this, I could get behind this. I love this. And come to find out that is not the community for me, which is fine not a good, not a bad. It's just not for me personally. That's not where it was. So here I was again, back on my, you know, self-discovery journey. So when I started Revitalize Womanhood, Ryan from Order of Man had said, would you like to start the women's version of this men's community? And I said, yes, absolutely. I think that sounds like a great opportunity. I would love to do that. I don't think I had any idea what I was getting myself into. And and this is this is nobody's fault. Nobody's. This is this is learning, growth, whatever. But 
here is this men's community that is already uh, successful, right? Thriving. It's been operating for eight years at the time, uh, seven to eight years at the time. And it, it's doing what it's doing for men. Hello. Women are not men. So anyway, we kind of knew that, kind of knew that. So I'm creating the women's version of this. The foundations are this are similar, but we knew men and women, we knew there was going to be some difference. I personally did not know what a podcast was. So I watched podcasts and YouTube episodes and listened, sorry, listened to podcasts and watched YouTube's episodes and, and researched all that I could. And, and what was modeled for me, I kind of picked up on and, and, and here I am this person who I feel very comfortable in my own skin. I feel like I am, I am genuine. I feel like, I feel like I right? I'm confident and secure in what I am and what I've created and my family and everything, all the things. Well, okay, bring us to, here we are yesterday when I met with this coach, this beautiful, her episode actually, her name is Amber. Her episode comes out um, next Tuesday. It's going to be amazing. Um, Bring a tissue, not a dry eye in the house. There will not be a dry eye in the house. Such a good episode. Anyway, I'm sitting with her talking and she is just asking me these questions that I really like some things that I've been struggling with lately. And I might've, if you've heard the episode, I think I've mentioned it on here before that I had a conversation with Rick. Some things changed, um, as of January 1st, some things changed in my business and now it is just completely, I get to have it be my own. I get to have it be exactly what I want it to be. I get to right? So the whole mission behind what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to put out into the universe is all my own, in my own hands. I get to do exactly what I want with it, succeed or fail, whatever. It's all mine. It's on my shoulders. It's I get to do it. So some things did did start changing in January, and I think they've been like ruminating. (laughs) It's been coming. It's been a long time coming, but here we are January 1st. I get to do it. I'm excited. Jumping off the diving board. Here we go. Feet first, just big splash. Right. And I think I sat with Rick and I kind of said to him, I feel like I've done a disservice to my listeners and 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 maybe like if they someone who listened to my podcast episodes i i don't know this i'm just kind of feeling this this is something that's in me this is some of my limiting beliefs right things that have me stuck or think things that have me thinking about things and i said i don't think that it kind of happened when i went on that girls trip last june for my birthday with kelly um to minnesota and we just spent the weekend at the lake and it was just <laughs> heaven. And I got to just be Gina. I didn't have to be mom. I didn't have to be a wife. I didn't. It's been a minute. So I'm going to tell you guys, you ladies, listen, take that girl's trip at least once a year. Oh my gosh. Quarterly, please. If you can make it happen, just go for two days, a weekend, whatever. Go take that girl's trip and go just be you. Be silly with your girlfriends um, or even just a solo trip. Sometimes that's so great. I encourage you, please, 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 if that is something that you can figure out, even if it's not something in your budget that you can figure out right now, maybe go just have an entire day where you say, listen, babe, husband, I need an entire day to just go have an adventure by myself, go hike, go ski, go do something that's an actual adventure, not just like go to TJ Maxx and shop. Don't do that. Go do, have an adventure and push yourself out of your comfort zone. Drive somewhere you've never been before. Go eat somewhere you've never eaten. Try something new. I am telling you what that will unlock in you is you can't put a price tag on that. You can't put a price tag on that. And so it happened to me. And now that I am especially in this world of being mindful about when these things are happening and and really sitting in when something triggers something that makes me go, huh, that I sit in it and I think, 
Why did I just think that? Well, maybe it's because of this. Well, why would I feel that way over this? Hmm, maybe it's because of that, right? It's it's being intentional and mindful when something bothers us that we're like, well, why did that bother me? Or anyway, so bringing it back to, I told Rick, I feel like I've done a disservice to my listeners because I don't think that you get the real Gina, like this, like the other week when I did the perfection trap episode and I showed up just from the gym and I'm like, Hey, this is me in all my mom life glory. Like this is Gina. And that is absolutely true. That is me. And I want you to see me be the silly, be the silly friend that is like, I'm fine to dance anywhere. I'm fine to do karaoke. I'm fine to make a scene. I'm fine to be the center of attention and loud, but I'm also the one that wants to cheer other people on and the one that wants to lift other people and encourage them to do, to get up in karaoke and to get up and dance or at the gym class that's like, yeah, we got this. I'm running around silly trying to drum up the energy of anybody, right? That's me. And and I feel like I've put myself, so here we go, bringing it up to the point of yesterday I met with this woman and she says, I see two, th- I see something here. And I think that you are two different people. You are just from my Instagram, just from listening to some episodes. She came up with this by herself. And it was all of these things that I've been battling with, but didn't quite know how to say or, or see for myself, admit to myself what it was. And she says, I see two people here. I see this woman that's in this box of expectations and supposed to do's and the podcast is supposed to do this. You're supposed to put it out this often. You're supposed to have a newsletter. You're supposed to have an Instagram. You're supposed to have blah, 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 blah. This woman, you're supposed to be a stay-at-home mom and only want to do that. You're supposed to be happy and satisfied cooking dinner every night and cleaning the house and taking care of kids and loving on your husband. That's, you're supposed to be okay with just that, right? And then here's this Gina over here that wants to be silly and wants to dance and hates cooking. Honestly, let's talk about this, okay? Let's all think for a minute, what are the things in your life that you're doing because you feel like you're supposed to be doing? I'm going to take a little right right hand down this road. Little left hand turn. <laughs> Give me a minute. Bring it back. I'm going to take a minute and my good friend Janie was just on a podcast episode with um one of her good friends and she just got a divorce after 10 years and it was last year and she was talking about cooking as a metaphor and she said i used to love being the wife that got home from a full day of work she has a full job not a part time job a full like actual goes to work occupational therapy she does a job and then comes home and she's still mom and still wife whatever and she said my husband loved big elaborate dinners every night and so i loved to do that for him i loved to be the wife that did that i loved to be the wife that had it all together in the clean house and the all the things and she said here we are divorced and i'm living on my own with my kids and realizing i don't want to cook dinner did i ever even really want to cook dinner no what did dinner do for me it it made me stressed because I was always short on time. It made me not be able to hang out with my kids and they would come and try to talk to me and I'd be so stressed, chopping, chopping, chopping. And I wouldn't be able to talk to them that I'm like, get out of the kitchen. I'm trying to make this dinner and it's got to be perfect, right? She's, she put all of this pressure on herself. Sorry, Janie, thank you for letting me steal that story. She put all of this pressure on herself and now she is in a place where she's looking back on things and thinking, I didn't even like doing that. I thought I liked doing that. that. I thought, and this is what I'm saying, ladies, like, do you actually take the time to say, do I like doing this? Whatever it is, going to the gym. Maybe you don't like going to the gym. Maybe you don't like being surrounded by people that are constantly making you feel like you're not doing it good enough. Go outside and run by yourself around a track. Maybe that's what you love to do. Maybe you don't. You can join the club. Maybe you don't like cooking all these elaborate dinners. I save 
recipes on Instagram, I'm constantly saving, saving, saving. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this someday. I'm going to make this someday. Are you like me? I have an entire folder that is saved recipes from Instagram that I'm like, oh, I'm totally going to make this someday. I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to do I'm never going to, I've never, I've literally never even opened that folder again. I put stuff there for someday when I'm going to, do- I'm never going to do that. And now my husband's figured out that he's actually good at cooking. And I'm like, oh yeah, I can get on board with this. I am loving this. This is, this is driving your sexy factor like through the roof. You making me tacos right now? Could not be sexier. What? (laughs) Anyway. So she's saying these things to me and I'm like, you are so right. And she says, what is revitalized womanhood? Explain it to me. This is how we, this is kind of how we started the conversation. I said, well, revitalized womanhood is back, you know, when women were, told to be in the home. We weren't allowed to vote even back then. We weren't allowed to have bank accounts. Women weren't allowed to have dreams bigger than keeping a house and raising the children. And that's what they were expected to do. So that's what we all did. And then here comes this revolution of women going to work and all of these women wanting to have all of these same blah, blahs as men, and we're going to work, and we're going to be working women, and whatever, whatever, whatever. And and then it created this like war between women, which is just toxic and nasty. It's like the working women were telling the housewives how wrong they were and how submissive and put upon they were when really all of these, some of these ones were like, I really love this. This is what I love. And the women that are stay at home moms are looking at the working women and they're like, you're, you're ruining family. You're ruining tradition. You are horrible. Right. And it created this whole, whatever, just toxic, toxic environment. And I said, revitalized womanhood to me, for me is knowing in my heart, in my gut, my intuition as a woman saying that I am happy and healthy and best serving my family if I am doing this. You describe your own description there, like leave your own (laughs) description here. Gina is the best mother. She can possibly be the best wife, the best woman, the happiest when I am traveling, when I am seeking out adventure, when I am loving on my kiddos in the way that I know how to love on my kiddos, not the way that Instagram moms are telling me to love on my kiddos. And I know that they go to school right now at the time being, because I can't be a homeschool mom because I would lose my mind. Right. And I love to have a business and I love to have community and I want all these things right? That is Gina, the revitalized woman that knows that I create the standard in which my family is operating. I create what what is right, right? I create my own destiny. I create my own fulfilled and impactful life, and that is right for me. And that is a revitalized woman. Totally different over here mom that stays home raising babies, homeschooling, homesteading, gardening, baking bread. Yes, 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 yes. Different from me, but she is living her life in her own purpose and in her own joy. And I want to celebrate her. That is revitalized womanhood. And, and it just dawned on me that because this coach was helping me realize it, that, hello, you are an imposter in your own life. It, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing anything to hurt myself. I wasn't doing anything tragic, but it was kind of like a, a realization that, again, multiple times through my life, multiple times I've marked clips in my life where things have happened and I go back on and see that these are moments where I have been an imposter in my life. And here it is. It's just happened again. Uh Uh-oh. Toilets flushing. Hoses are on. (laughs) We got to wrap it up, ladies. So whether we know it or not, at some point in our lives, we have been an imposter and we have lived our lives for 
other people or according to what other people expect of us. And I hope that this episode has just given you the foundation to sit with that and ask yourself, what is it in my life that I'm actually truly doing for me that makes me happy? And what am I doing that actually is not serving me at all? So ladies, thank you again for joining me. I will ask you a favor. If you would please be so kind, help me out and rate and review this episode. It helps as all of these wonderful reviews push me out into the podcast world and raise me higher and gets this message out to all the women's, right? We want all of the women to share in this community and these beautiful messages about empowering each other through our own authentic lives. (laughs) You guys, I sure love you. Thank you for joining me again. So yes, please go rate and review the podcast and share it, share it, share it with the women in your life that you think need to hear this, this little reminder. And come check us out. If you haven't already, join the Facebook group, Revitalized Womanhood Facebook group. Uh-oh. Oh, no pants on. No diapers. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> Mom life. Thanks, ladies. <laughs>